All right. Good morning, Sean. Happy hey, Friday. Morning. Happy Facebook Friday, Jay. How are you, my friend? I am good. It's been a busy week. Oh, busy. I was thinking about that actually today because, as, as well, the audience may or may not know, we typically meet every Monday with the team and then we'll just connect throughout the week. But if we're both busy, it just blows by. And the next thing I know, it's Friday morning. It was like, wait, we just met on Monday morning. And there's so much to talk about. There's so many things going on. Uh, yeah. So it does fly by for sure. And I guess that's kind of, uh, you know, um, indicative of, of our industriousness and our work. I mean, just the fact that we're busy. That we're in, and, and some of it is productive. I think most of it's productive, to be frank with you. Uh, yeah. but, it's, but I would say COVID-19, the, the time that we're living, the times we're living in now, has made certain parts of the process really, really more cumbersome. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But I think first, this show is brought to you by, I'm let Jay Wu say Tyler Realty. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, 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 I want to share real quick. I got an, a, an amazing uh, bit of love from my father and mother the other day. Uh, my wife yeah. and children were away. Uh, so it left me and they invited me over for dinner. I walked in, there was a nice, big, beautiful bottle of Don Julio and a steak. I was like, wow, I was just so grateful for it. And, it, and, and through the course of the dinner, which lasted a good three and a half hours, and in the conversation, my dad said, he, he said, he goes, you guys need to understand, I'm incredibly proud of you and Jay, what you created. He goes, you, you, you have your own firm. You guys have done something and created something that is not only real estate centric, but is community centric. And he goes, the, the fact that you can do both things equally and as busy as you are in your lives, still have full family lives, still have big social lives, and yet do these things. He goes, honestly, it's impressive. And my father ran a huge part of the corporation for the John Douglas Company. And it was, he said, honestly, it eclipsed what, what, my, what I had done and what my brother had done to a degree because we never owned our own company. We, know, we, didn't, we, we kind of fell in stock with whoever we were working with. And that's not to take away from them because they were both tremendously successful. But that endorsement, so when we say brought to you by Highly Realty, it has a new source of pride for me. You have a lot to be proud of there, girl, with me together. But it's, uh, it's awesome. Uh, I just it just made me stand up straighter and prouder and right, right. you know that's amazing that is just it was very coming nice. from your dad who I admire as you know so tremendously as just a genius in the industry and the mentor he was to hundreds of agents who are still very successful to this day you know he is witty and industrious and just cares so deeply you know about the business I'm just really blown away. Oh, you know, it's super cool. And, and, and I'll detract for one more minute before we move forward. But I wanted to share, you know, it's, it's so interesting, the father and son dynamic here, because my dad has nine gajillion years of experience in this, right? Since 1970, I think it was 71. So he'd been really significant through different marketplaces. I mean, tens of thousands of transactions he's oversaw and participated in, et cetera. And so he gives suggestions. And I'm like, you know, no, thanks, dad. I, I, I'm going to do it my way. And then, like, as time folds, unfolds, I'm like, oh, he was right. And I, I tell him that all the time, like, Dad, I just let you know you were right. <laughs> just, I'm sorry. I'm so stubborn. It's a father-son dynamic. I see it with my own boys. They're like, okay, Dad, whatever you have to say. And, and hopefully they'll come to a place of humility. Uh, but it's just kind of funny. So, Dad, if you're watching a mom, just love you to death. I uh, want you to know that. Parents, uh, yeah, your dad is always right, though. I have to say, I, I love talking with him and getting advice from him and his feedback. And so I, I love that so much. And speaking of community, we have our a wonderful neighbor uh, joining us this morning. I'm so excited to introduce Chef Eric. I've taken many of his cooking classes with my family and um, even my extended family with my sister's in-laws and we brought uh, to as a gift his cooking classes and I know so many of my friends whose kids go to the summer uh, school in the past for cooking and taking his classes and he makes it fun and the recipes are delicious and uh, they're very good well, neighbors to us oh my gosh I mean first of all he's he's a it's almost like he's a best kept secret that's not a secret like he's got his cool little location and he's kind of tucked right in, alongside of our offices over here on, on Ellum Ave uh, but you're absolutely right. His reputation is outstanding. The things that he does, that he produces, the quality in which he does, the classes that he gives. Uh, he's an institution onto his own, and it's really nice to have him here and be a part of it because he's 
very much inter intertwined in our community. Yeah, well, let me bring uh, Chef into our show so we can say hi to him this morning. Brilliant. Morning, Eric. Good morning. Hi, guys. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> all, all the better for having you here with us this morning, Eric. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and so uh, before, um, uh, I guess, we get started, we were talking a little bit earlier about um, how to uh, get onto the Facebook group and share it and all that. And I'm afraid I'm still not as technically savvy as you guys are. So <laughs> you could run those instructions by me one more time. <laughs> the media like Miss Jenny is uh, standing by and she'll go ahead and she'll get that going, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you just go to the Hila Realty page and then you go underneath where our show should be live right now and you click share and then it should ask if she could share it to Chef Eric page, page you guys manage or yeah. your personal Facebook page, etc. And it's, it's actually just with two clicks and it goes right there. That way your, yet, and, your sphere can also watch as well. Exactly. And Eric, and for what it's worth as many times as we've done this, I'm still challenged by those two steps. So just a true <laughs> confession. Good. I, ha I have, I have, I have an equal. That's great. <laughs> well, it's okay. I don't know about you, but it makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> uh, you know, I was you know going to say mis misery loves company. <laughs> well, you know, what's interesting is that technology can be super challenging unless you can have a face to face, someone actually show you once you see it once you're like, Oh, that's all it was. That's it's true. just distance learning and especially teaching people how to get on Zoom or how to be on technology yeah. has been a challenge for hundreds of people. It's not just you guys. And so yeah. Very true. it's hard from afar to reach through the screen and say, here you go. And, uh, yeah. and so, uh, exactly. I'm, Virtual hug. I'm, I'm uh, encountering that learning curve too, as we're going to uh, probably find out. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, because you're going to go online now, right? You're taking yes. the class online? In fact, yes. Thanks to uh, the pandemic, uh, uh, a lot of businesses have had to come up with something to at least try to get the doors open or, or keep the doors open. And um, of course, uh, the SB loan, SBA loans and all that are really helping. Um, but a lot of us um, are like, for me personally, I'm Believe it or not, I'm almost 60, and it wasn't my plan to take on more debt, but uh, here we are. So uh, we've got the loan, and we're able to keep our doors open. But um, right now, uh, the best way to for me to be able to share my knowledge with everybody is to get online. So I actually have a really great um, uh, condensed version of my Master Chef series that uh, we're going to be getting onto our website uh, for people to buy. Yeah, and it's it's getting a lot of positive feedback from those testers that we've sent it out to. And um, uh, we also are doing some Zoom classes uh, for my uh, summer school students. Um, and th they've been going great. I've been having students coming from uh, signing in from New York and from Orange County. So that's really one of the great things about the technology is that I can actually reach out and share my knowledge to people that aren't just in the LA area because not everybody- Isn't can that cool? That. Yeah, because you're not, that. you're not, that's the thing. We're not contained by geography anymore exactly. and traffic. And so whether they're in, you know, Calabasas or, you know, yeah. uh, out in Timbuktu, you know, they can, they can exactly. totally take your classes and then, and the ingredients are findable in the stores. And so I think that's sure wonderful. Are. Yeah. And a lot of the parents are doing the Instacart thing, so they don't have to hassle going on out. Um, and so that's another fantastic thing too. Oh, another technology cool. advantage. Yeah. It's really great. No, that, you know, that's, that's super interesting because it's like cracking the code, right? Like how yep. do we move forward in these environments? And it seems like there's obstacle after obstacle and then the ingenuity part, right? Which I think the chef actually knows at a very high level, how to be creative and given circumstances and adversities or difficulties. Um, and the fact that you're adapting to that, like an old dog to new tricks, which is the way I feel with these things as yeah, well, you know, but when you surrender to it, you're like, okay, well, I just opened myself up to actually significantly greater possibilities. I'm not so geographically limited. Although I might ask, and I wanted to ask, you know, you have this great little location over here just off of Pico Boulevard and Overland on Pelham. 
Avenue. Yep. You've been there for a very long time. 17 uh, years. 17, 17 years. One wow. seven. Yep. It's opened up in 2003. Yeah. It, and it's a really impressive facility. You, you know, you have your reception and supplies when you come in and then you walk backward. There's like an instructional room and then you go in and there's like this full grade commercial industrial kitchen. And I mean, I've seen people working like buzzing bees in there and you're like, a, and you're like a maestro just walking from thing to thing. And it's, it's fun to watch. It's, it's, it's art. Like it's, it's like a theater really. It um, really is. Yeah. And that's why you see a lot of restaurants having that whole open concept that they've been running with for years now, because people want to see all that action and all that stuff. So um, well, food yeah. is very interesting, obviously. People are just obsessed with cooking and cooking shows, Still. obviously, and baking right now during yeah. the quarantine. And so, I mean, you're so relevant. And I think that the fact that you are able to continue and take this online is so exciting for people. I didn't realize you were doing that until uh, several weeks ago. And I was like, oh, this is amazing to yeah. hopefully teach our teenage kids how to make a meal or two. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And uh, even younger kids too. We actually sure. had, um, you know, speaking of distances, it wasn't that far away, I bet, but I guess from LA perspective, traveling it is, there was actually a parent up in Porter Ranch, which is way north of the 118, uh, north of Northridge. And he has a couple of kids that I think like maybe nine or 10. And uh, they took one of my kids camps and he sent pictures of everything that they made after every day. Wow. It, was, it was just awesome. And uh, they got big, bright smiles on their faces. And it's just a phenomenal thing to see. And that just, you know, uh, it was just, that's what I, that's what I, why I'm doing what I'm doing. So and it, it's just great. That, that, Eric, that brings up a couple, I have so many questions for you. I, I mean, by the way, I can keep you for the hour if you I'll want. I'll be here all night. Just, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there, there is that great comfort of food, right? There is yeah. something about the idea that we're nourishing our bodies, we're resting, we're celebrating the fruits of labor. Like there's so many things that are ingrained and it's so primal, right? So there's yeah. such a True sensory it. smells and tastes and yeah. uh, even the sounds to a degree. Uh, but when you first selected this area what was the thought process what brought you to this part yeah. of the city to open up your spot I was just kind of curious because it's been here a long time yeah. it has it's been a long time and it actually took me I think like two years to find that space um, because unlike um, a, a lot of restaurateurs who either have some deep pockets or they've got a bunch of investors it was just me. I wound up utilizing uh, what little retirement money I had saved up. And then I uh, got a couple of people to help out. Uh, a friend on uh, Jenny's side of the family and dad. Thank you very much, dad. But I had already been teaching for four years in the general area. And uh, one of the things that I wound up doing was uh, a lot of intensive demographic research. And that's, of course, while I was still looking for a place. And I just found that that particular area around that general 40510 area, 10 freeway area was really nice and centrally located. So people from the neighborhood, which I still have a lot of people coming in can come on by. But then I also have students that are coming from Orange County and I have students that are coming from Stevenson Ranch and uh, even out in Moore Park, Simi Valley. So uh, there we are. So that's what really led me to that. And then I... Uh, you know, like I said, it was a couple of years of looking for places that were just everything from just like an empty shell, which I just I couldn't deal with. It was just going to be way too much money to get ready. And then it turned out that uh, uh, the classroom was there. It actually used to be a vegetarian bakery. So <laughs> all of the um, all the uh, uh, the gas lines were there for the ovens that the baker was using. So I just had to put in uh, I had to paint it and I changed a couple of things. Um, and uh, took down a couple of walls and put up a couple of others and put in the equipment and there we are and it's been like that. that's so smart that is really amazing i didn't know that that was the history it is true though the central location of where yeah. we are our offices are it yeah. is such an idyllic place because it is west side but you can access it from palisades down to Palos verdes to exactly you, know, you name it yeah absolutely agree with you and that's so why we love being there 
right on the corner as well because I feel like we're the little shop on the corner. Yeah, and, I do like yeah. kind of being tucked away a little bit, not not being quite on Pico. I was worried that at first uh, not having something on such a busy street would be detrimental, but kind of off to the side, it's actually been turning out to be really great, so. No, it's it's kind of like a good book when you just turn the page and you open up the corner and there's something really rich and, and juicy there with information yeah. and resource. It's just a great, you know, you, you have something very special, Chef, and I, and I wanted to go back a little bit more into the history of it. Uh, yeah. I'm assuming you, you've been classically trained. You've been practicing yep. as a chef in food service for a fairly long time, it's fair to say. For 25 years now. So wow. but 25 years now, I was just starting. So um, I actually am a career changer. So I do teach a lot of people that have, are going down a career path that are really getting into food and doing that thing to help them get started. And uh, I used to be a music major when I was in high school. And really? I said, yeah, uh-huh. Yep. What did you play? I, I played baritone saxophone. That was my main instrument. And then okay. I went up to uh, I went up to Cal State Northridge, which back then had a really awesome music program. I still think it does, but it's been a long time. And um, I wound up uh, seeing that um, I had a couple of options of either teaching music, and of course I was already I was only eighteen, and I had no interest in teaching at that point in my life, and or become a studio musician. And one of the things about being a studio musician is that one, you have to, I would have to play more than baritone saxophone. You got to play a lot of instruments and you got to be able to read a piece of music and you got to be able to play it perfectly first time. And uh, it's a lot of pressure. That's there were amazing. also uh, a lot of other students that were coming in from all various places uh, throughout the state, guys that had like perfect pitch and uh, other people that can just improvise like John Coltrane. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I, <laughs> I, 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 I. That so, actually on, on the turntable right now is a love supreme because I listen to that pretty much every day right. I have for the better, better part of 30 years. It, it's yep. actually my single. It's maybe one, two. It's in my top three albums of all time. There we go. Oh, yeah. And speaking of that, I haven't given that. I've still got a turntable and I got some really great records, everything from, you know, Jack White. I'm a big Jack White fan. Jack um, White's a great I, composer. And, uh, you know, I still have uh, like some old Brecker Brothers and stuff like that, kind of funky stuff. So, yeah, it's really. So anyway, I um, I got into cooking. Um, I took a class kind of like what I teach and decided I wanted to become a chef. So I went off wow. to the Culinary Institute of America back in Hyde Park, New York. I packed up everything. I sold everything and uh, went off and moved on out there because they actually have a campus there in Hyde Park where they've got dormitories. And I knew I could just stay there and I could just totally immerse myself, which is what I did. So I, uh, <laughs> I got into a dorm with a couple of guys in a room that was meant for two people and they had three crammed <laughs> in there. And oh my, that was another, that's a story for another time. And wow. uh, two, uh, two very, very quick years later, it's a, it's a little bit different than a typical university where you go to school from like, you know, eight to one or uh, eight to two, you either go to school from seven in the morning until two in the afternoon, or you go into school from like three in the afternoon until like, or four in the afternoon to like 10 o'clock at night. So there was actually two shifts of students on campus, either an AM shift or a PM shift. And uh, you would wind up going in. The first month or so was just a lot of classroom stuff, uh, food history and sanitation and culinary math and stuff like that. And then you got into the kitchen. And the way that they had it worked, and I think they still operate it like this, is that the students that are in uh, at the very beginning are fed food from the students that are further along in the program. So <sighs> it's, a, it's a, a two year program. So um, we wound up going in and we would uh, first start just, just like I teach, uh, we're practicing knife skills and how to do basic things like stock. And then we would break for lunch. And then we would wind up getting a meal that were made from the students for the long in the program, head on back, finish up for a couple of hours, clean the whole kitchen. And then I would go back to my dorm room and I would nap because you're on your feet this whole time right, nap right. for like an hour and then get on up and go to the library. They have this huge library and just study and just dive into it. So wow. I did that for two years straight and uh, graduated with honors. And then at that point, I, I knew that I still had, I had a really great education, but like I tell all my students, 
that graduate my master chef and my master baking program. Your education is just starting. Uh, you've got a lot more to learn. So I took off to Europe and I worked in Barcelona, <laughs> Spain. Uh, the, the, the One of the oldest, uh, uh, I think they've got one Michelin star, which is yeah, not slouch. I mean, that's that so takes to just get a Michelin star. And it's family owned restaurant uh, called Via Veneto. They're still around. I actually follow them on Instagram and I worked there for about a year. And then I went up to uh, Munich, Germany, uh, where I got really the like a almost like a polar opposite in terms of a lot more organization and um, um, cleanliness and all that right, stuff. Right, right. Talking, that, that you, yeah, the German mind. Yeah, you bet, man. The trains there were phenomenal. You never have to worry about a darn thing. Just unbelievable timetable. So, um, and I worked, uh, there was a hotel, a uh, Kempinski hotel that they just built at the airport back then. It was only two years old. So that was awesome. Everything was spanking brand new. And I worked there for a year. And uh, then I came back here to Los Angeles because this is where my parents live. They live actually at, over in the San Fernando Valley, which is where I'm at, at right now. And um, started to teach. Start, or actually, no, I didn't start to teach yet. Then when I got back, I started to work for Joachim Splichal, who owns the Patina restaurant. Sure. At the yeah. Disney concert hall. And I worked for him for four years. And then I started to teach. I, I love that. I, I love that you know how to pronounce his name, Joachim Splichal, which is... Yes. Yeah, I was sharing with my wife and kids the other day in Los Angeles, the, mm -hmm. the food scene came really on the heels of Joachim, Michelle okay. Richard, right? Yep. And th these, there were like two or three of these luminaries by yep. which opened the door for everybody else. It's not unlike the Italians that came in with Giorgio Baldi and the Medeos and, and exactly. Ago, those, right? So how cool is it that you know that yeah. history? And I love that history of LA. That's yeah, just cool. Yes. That, and in fact, I, th I still think one of the big things that he does is he uh, caters uh, the Emmys and the Grammys and Wolfgang Puck, of course, does the Oscars. So they're two of the real big heavy hitters. And, uh, you know, Patina is still around. He's still got a couple of other outlets. And I uh, felt I had learned enough and I started to teach. Uh, actually, an old classmate of mine was teaching at a cooking school that's no longer uh, in business. And he said, hey, I... Uh, I'm actually sick. Can you come in and fill in for me? And I did. And I just fell in love with it. I really oh. got excited about uh, having all this knowledge and having all these students asking me all these questions and being able to share that and also cook and make some awesome stuff at the same time. So uh, oh. I did that. And uh, um, then while I was doing that, one of the things that I realized that if I really wanted to be successful, um, I'm going to have to own my own business. And uh, that's what a lot of restaurateurs and a lot of chefs do. So I um, started to uh, apply for that SBA loan and write a business plan and go to a bunch of banks and get rejected by a bunch of banks. <laughs> and, uh, finally, uh, exactly. And then finally, and, and, and you know, uh, being in the realty business, it's all about, it's all about relationships. If you don't like you know, it, you know, you're going to be able to do a better job if you really like the person you're working with. So I finally found a banker. And in fact, he's still around. I just contacted him about my current SBA loan due to the pandemic. And um, he remembered me and all that. And he liked what I uh, had and he liked me and he liked my vision. So we were able to get the loan. And in 2003, we in August of 2003. So next month will be my anniversary month. And wow. We'll classroom and um the rest is history. But that's amazing, well, though, because there's so much mental capital, right? The amount yeah. of knowledge that you've accumulated over the last yes. quarter of a century to, to share what you're sharing now. And I think that our paths are very similar because Sean and I subsequently also have a quarter of a century and combined over 50 years of experience and knowledge and to be able to comprise that with a loving, caring passion and personality to also want to connect with other human beings and help them through that process. And so to hear your passion and, and your why behind why your classes are so amazing and the fact that you have such joy in helping people discover the, the art form of cooking, that is conveyed in your classes. It is conveyed in the recipes that you share and how you teach people. And I think that that is an art form that is 
not easy for all people. I can't believe you're 60. I, I just, my jaw almost dropped when you said that because that's mind boggling. Good for you. I owe it all to my wife. <laughs> Go, Jenny. <laughs> she, Jenny keeps you young. Well, Jenny's yep. a husband. <laughs> Jenny, Jenny's whirling stuff around. Like, Jenny does oh, not yeah. rest. Yep. Right? She gets going. She is yeah. a multitasker. Yes. Yeah. She's definitely doing that. You know, Chef, I, I wanted to address something too for the viewership yeah. and so that they understood. Part of the reason we wanted to go into that history was to share the level of qualification, the level of experience, a level of knowledge, and to really endorse that and to share with people who are watching. You know, you owe it to yourself to, to, to learn a little bit more about how to cook and prepare foods. It is a way that we connect in, in all of our different ways throughout society as friends and as family. And it's a, it's a loving, nurturing gift. And the more skill sets that you have, the, the more you have to offer in that sense. And it, it broadens the experience. And, and Chef, I just wanted to say that, you know, you have this great resume. And for those who don't know, do yourself a favor and, and even make it, I don't know, an individual course. A, a, it's a great date night. It's yeah. a great gift. You know, and these I think they're things that I, I want people to know because you do a great job. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. And I really I owe it to my students because one of the things that I realized is that everybody that comes in my door uh, has a real desire to learn. Some of them already have the passion. And being that everybody is here because we love to cook and we love food. And like you're saying, we love that, that sharing component and that nourishing component. That's really what makes it all go around. So it's uh, just really great to have everybody in there with that same kind of general uh, desire to learn more and have a good time doing it. So yeah, I owe it to them. That's for sure. Oh. Well, I think during this quarantine, I think that now families can kind of gather yes. and learn how to do your classes together that way. So I think this is it's a wonderful bonding experience. It's a wonderful shift for folks. And, you know, fortunately for me, I'm able to hang with my extended family. So my niece is 10 and I have an eight year old mm -hmm. nephew that lives a block away from me. And it's fortunate that, you know, we've already cross contaminated four and a half months ago. So we've been hanging out a lot together and they love cooking way more than my 15 year old. And so my wish is that uh, you have some classes coming up, I think in August, you have some. Yes. Some yes. And so we are doing uh, uh, virtual classes uh, in August. Um, and one of the great things about this is that um, I, I, with uh, the fee for the virtual class, of course, uh, you wind up getting your password to go on to Zoom, but I also email the recipes and the recipes also have a bunch of tips and uh, little do ahead steps because sometimes we do wind up getting you know, uh, anywhere from eight to, uh, all the way up to 15. And so the 15 year olds and those that are uh, a little, maybe a little bit younger, but are really passionate, they'll read the recipe and they'll say, okay, before the class starts, I need to go ahead and I need to get a pot of water on the stove and I need to start to bring it up and stuff like that. And I also a shopping list and an Instacart link so parents can just go and do that or they can run out to the store and get it. So um, nice. yeah, it's, and it's, a, it's a great little thing. And uh, it really also gives me uh, the ability to share even more knowledge where uh, as some of those things, I would just wind up telling people uh, when we're, we're in the classroom, uh, I've done this for you and I've done that for you and stuff like that. But here I've got a little bit more laid out because we do have that distance. But at the end, I still see these awesome plates and uh, this great food. And even though I've just eaten breakfast, I when I look at it, I'm like, I can't be all free. I, I, re I relate to that, <laughs> which is why I can't watch the cooking channel. I just watch the cooking network and I just like all of a sudden start to lose control. <laughs> Uh, I, Jeff, I, I had I had a couple. <laughs> I actually had a, a question or two relative to that too. You know, it's so interesting. Like, I wanted to know from a chef's perspective. Let's say you go out to dinner with your wife and you go to a restaurant of sorts. Do you find yourself mentally critiquing food? Is that an issue for you? Like too much salt, too much heat, whatever it might be. Yeah, but I, I guess I don't get, I, it really depends on where we're going to go. Of course, if it's going to be a real special occasion place, I might. Um, but being that we're still working 50 to 60 hours a week, honestly, if we get a chance to get out and we go somewhere, we're just happy to have somebody serve us. And uh, <laughs> we're, really, we're, really appreciative, uh, we're really appreciative of the servers, especially now. So, um, of course, uh, it, we always uh, uh, maintain a really good tip amount. And uh, then there, you know, there are some times if, uh, um, 
you know, there's something that's really glaringly wrong. I mean, once in a great while, I can't remember the last time I went somewhere and actually had to send back a steak because I ordered it rare and it came back like black and blue. I mean, it was like raw, totally raw. In the middle. I, I can't even remember the last time that happened. So no, I'm really just grateful to be able to sit down and have somebody bring me some food. And like you, like you were saying, Sean, that, that really nice, uh, that comforting uh, and communal feel, because I know that somebody's back there in the kitchen and they're cooking it because they want to, and they love it. And I am really happy to have it. So. <laughs> oh, that's such a good sentiment. And it's true. I think that our level of gratitude is accentuated even more so. And I agree with you a couple of times that I have been out definitely uh, looking around and seeing the effort they had a pl place to, to make it a safe environment, but also to have someone serving me after cooking every single night um, with the family, uh, definitely a level of gratitude and appreciation and leaving that extra 30% tip for, for these servers. And the fact that they're, they're you know, less capacity that they get to serve. And yeah. so it, it's a matter of how can I pay it forward? You know? And so that, that is a big, big deal. Good for really, you. Yeah, because a yeah. lot of a lot of them, just like a lot of us, are really we're suffering. I mean, it's not easy, and uh, um, uh, restaurants in particular are ones that have a very thin profit margin, uh, notoriously thin. So yeah, now, when sure. you wind up vaporizing that income, it's yeah. It and certainly um, since uh, well January and February of this year were two of the best years we've ever had in the 17 years here at the classroom. But in March, when we got shut down, it's been right. nothing since then. Right. Yes, I've had, I do have a couple of Zoom classes, but is it enough to pay my rent? No, it's not. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's very, it's devastating. So um, it, it, it's, it's interesting you say that too, because when you look at it from a larger perspective, and I was attending, I've referenced this several times now in our past uh, Facebook lives, uh, the Anderson projection, uh, UCLA's business school's projection. And they were talking about restaurants in particular, and, they, and their general suggestion was that perhaps as much as almost 50% of them won't actually survive this pandemic, uh, which is frightening because they are so enriching to a community. They're so valuable as a, a gathering spot. And then I read yesterday, actually, that the general anticipation is the cost of food is going to go up about 3% total, which is a really big number. It Typically, is. it moves in 1%. So 3% is, whoa, that's significant. Yeah. So I think the importance of shopping and supporting local businesses and your neighborhood and your community becomes more and more critical. And it, it's, it's an act of love and compassion for where you live and for those neighbors of yours. You know, we're all neighbors when we live here, we're working, whether we live here because we sleep here at night or sometimes because you do both, uh, yeah, exactly. you know, it's, it's, yep. it's critical. So we, we love supporting sure. you, Chef Eric. Oh, you, you and Jenny have been great. Every time we do an event, you guys jump right in there, always wanting to participate. And I think you make us all look good. Oh, thank you so much. And unfortunately, those events are going to be a thing of the past for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's, so, that's true. That's yep. true. Our fall, our fall festival is definitely not happening this year. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Just like Pic Pico canceled. I don't know if we're gonna, even going to have it again next May. We'll see. But for now... Well, that we can just uh, uh, keep our fingers crossed and keep our nose to the grindstone and hopefully we can get everything opened up because, uh, yeah, you know, like Sean was saying, you're going to, you're seeing a lot of how interconnected uh, everything is. And mm -hmm. I think one of the reasons for that produce uh, hike is because a lot of restaurants usually buy all the produce That's and right. they're not buying it. So that means that the produce winds up sitting there and they have to do something with it and that causes the price to go up. So... Well, I have to believe, though, that with with the need for change, innovation does appear. And my wish is that if with the technology and the access we have in today's day and age, how can we not be more resourceful and more connected and more engaged in creating efficiency uh, amongst the food source system and making sure that, you know, the the uh, an instability of where the food goes and wastefulness of it, et cetera. Hopefully that, my wish is that that starts to shift and change and they realize there's, there could be a way of greater distribution for those who have food insecurities or challenge right now, it's connected with the farms, et cetera. There's gotta be ways that we, and I know there are folks out there trying to create it on, on some scale but if yeah. only it could be a national scale of how we can all help and use those resources for good, you know? So 
That's how Absolutely. it is. Yeah. So, so Chef Eric, let's say, and, and thank you for your time and spending it with us. It just is so enriching and it just goes by in a blink of an eye. But I, I, I want our audiences to be able to know how do, how do we look up Chef Eric? How do we sign up for classes? Where do we go? Our producer has already put the links up on, on the Facebook yeah. page. She's already been, there's some comments galore going on with everybody oh, loving uh, your story. Oh, awesome. Chef. So you'll get to read it when you're done with the show, oh, but there's, oh, the, there's, there's a really thank, nice commentary. Thank you everybody. Thank you so much. And the website's culinaryclassroom.com. And our phone number is 310-470-2640. Uh, so of course the web is where a lot of us wind up contacting. So you can email me through there. You can see everything that we got going on. And then if you wanna call right now, you'll probably get the machine, but you can leave a message and uh, we'll call you back. But um, chances are I'll see an email and just take a look and uh, we'll see you on Zoom and very shortly back in the classroom. Well, awesome. you are all over social media, so I know that you have a, a very robust Facebook page as well, and they can definitely see some of your activity on there as well, right? So absolutely, yeah. I just put up. I made a little. I made a a, a a a pandemic loaf of banana bread, and I put up that video, and it uh, put it up on my YouTube channel, and it's getting all kinds of views. And I'm going to nice. start doing that too. I'm going to start. I was mentioning that. Um, uh, that 10 week series that I'm gonna be putting up on my website for those students, like I was mentioning before, that are back in New York, uh, that are joining me on a, a Zoom class that wanna get a little bit more in depth. So I'm gonna have that on my website and then I'm gonna start uh, doing some more, maybe some a little bit casual like this where I'm just doing something at home, like how to make some pizza dough or how to make some pasta. And then others will wind up being in the classroom, so. Keep an eye out. Hey, yeah. That's fantastic. It's that a wonderful fantastic. mixer. Way to be creative, Chef. Thank you. Thank you. Well, have a great weekend. Thanks so much for joining us today. And uh, we're looking forward to hopefully seeing you as we walk by your office. You bet. Yeah, do a little wave. <laughs> and so great to see you guys. And I can't wait to see you in the flesh. And next time I, we're out in the back parking, of course, we'll say hi. And uh, uh, you guys hang in there too, and we'll all get through this together. There we are. Right? We'll say we'll say hi <laughs> safely. Just mask on. <laughs> bye, Chef. All right, bye, Chef. Bye, Thank, Thank you so much. Bye, bye. Thank you. Bye now. <laughs> How well, cool is that? Great story. You know, that's what I love is the fact that every week we get to discover the why behind people's passion because they work so hard, and I know how many hours they put into. Um, keeping their shop going before this pandemic, I was only imagining what was happening now. But the the richness of his story and the amount of experience he has, um, that was wonderful to hear. Well, it's it's like a great book. Like right? you start to open up the cover and you start to read into the story and you get some of the some of the 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 basis or the foundation of of, of or the cumulative experiences that he's had, which are really significant. And then you get that really master class, that access to a master level's worth of knowledge, and it's all attainable. And to your point, Jay, I think you brought up a really great point, which is innovation. In these environments, cracking the code is about innovation. And yet still important to us is the humanitarian threat. People right. are people, and people are what matters. And so with Chef Eric, you know, he's our neighbor. I didn't realize he had been there for 17 years. I didn't know it was a vegan bakery before. So I had two like fun little facts that was like, oh, vegan bakery. That's kind of cool. And then you start to think about like his pedigree, like the way he went to school and how he immersed himself in New York. And then he travels over to Europe and he studies in different environments and communities in Spain and in Belgium and or in Germany. And I'm like, wow, this guy is really qualified in so many ways to do what he does. And the fact that he's this little resource sitting around the corner from us, that's pretty cool, you know? And I want, the, I want the world to know that. And now he's accessible. So if you really wanted to learn how to up your game a little bit, there Sauces, are probably some- baking. I mean, that, those are some pretty difficult things. So that's, that's awesome. No, they're great skills. And I, and I love the fact that he was there and he's been a very good neighbor uh, and he's a good part of the community. And that's something you and I very much believe in is supporting our community and, and giving back and sharing with that because they're so vital. You know, it doesn't matter where you, you reside at night. It's the fact is if you live in the space where we are interacting, you become part of our family extendedly uh, by extension and, and we want to be able to be there. So him spending that time is huge. 
Uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to swan dive into over that. Just speaking about that. I want to put a shout out again to the six restaurant. I have now formulated an arguably questionable habit, but somewhere around four o'clock, I love to go over there and get a pint. It's a happy hour pint. And the pint oh. usually turns in, turns into one or two. Well, they've got it to your point, all safely spaced all, you know, there were last night, there were tons of people coming in for the Dodger game, which was fantastic. They were projecting. Oh, I know. How right. cool was that? Mookie Super cool. 12 years. Right. Man, that's awesome. Yeah, we caught that game. The first several innings were pretty painful to watch, actually, but <laughs> they were just getting warmed up. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, it's interesting, too, like it's something about the adaptation uh, of how we are entertained and what we do and what, what is interesting to us. I mean, for instance, the pandemic has helped, helped me really go back and reinvestigate and explore, uh, you know, the 450 albums that I have of vinyl. That's a lot. It's a big archive. So I, the fact is I've neglected a lot of the albums. And then I realized as I listened to some of them, okay, that's why I don't listen to you. So I'm able to actually handle that and parcel them away or, or up. Actually, I basically, uh, what do they call that? Up uh, when you, when you, uh, oh God. Yeah, upcycle. I upcycle them, right? I give them and I just donate them. I bring them over to them. I'm like, look, you know, this, somebody else might find this interesting or what have you. I thought that was cool that Chef Eric was actually based in music and it makes sense music, organizational mind, thought, and, and being a chef and cooking. Uh, but having said that, uh, being able to have the time to go back and entertain that way, and the Dodger game now, I mean, you know, the, watching it on television. Uh, I'm not a huge TV guy for that kind of sport, but I love the radio. Fun to listen to on the radio because my mind pictures it all. And uh, anyway, go Dodgers. It's a good time. It's a good time of year. It's a good time to be patriotic in LA. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. Well, you know, I, it's funny because uh, my husband and I started watching the gentrified, which is such a great written uh, Netflix uh, show. And there, one of the characters is wanting to be a Michelin star chef and works at a Michelin star restaurant and but he's Latina and he's going through all of the but he's too white and they're they're just making fun of him and the show is just brilliant but it's centered around food you know and so we're watching the show and we had just eaten dinner you know a couple hours before and we're sitting down uh you know 8 30 9 o'clock to catch an episode and we're like why is it that we're hungry we want a tamale now because they're they're making <laughs> it look sure. so good or a taco sure. <laughs> so it's true when you were talking about the cookie show with chef eric i'm like uh yep even these shows that are centered around family and food and eating and just being immersed into that show um, and we're just laughing our butts off. I mean, it's just, it's, it's really clever. And I, I, I think it's a wonderful show. If you, if you haven't seen it, uh, Gentrify is a wonderful um, show to, to, I think the writing and the acting is very witty. Well, I think <laughs> so. the idea too is, is if you're able to uh, focus and funnel in like kind of fun and cleaner sided humor, if you will, without some of the darknesses, we, I think there's plenty of darkness to, to be able to extrapolate from the world darkness. all around us. Right, I, I can't totally watch anything that. dark. I can't no, do it. <laughs> I know that. Ironically, some of our other Highlander members really like the dark side. Kate. I Can know. I I right? I don't, that's the only main difference between Kate and I is her taste in, in film versus mine are the polar opposites. I want rom-coms and comedy and she wants horror. And I was like, I've lived through horror. I can't watch it live or watch it. It's just, it's just too close to home. Oh, yeah. I can't. My imagination, well, once I see it, I, I can't get the picture out of my head. It's so it's so interesting, especially in these days, this day and age, right? With social intermedia, a social media interconnection, and and everybody having different thoughts and opinions, and grabbing this bit of information and that bit of information, and disseminating it, sharing it, and it's just this general sense of overwhelm of stimuli, right? So that it's nice to be able to unplug if you will to a degree find something that i can't say is mindless but is entertaining and has almost a wholesome property to it um that to your point and i love that endorsement from you because i know that about you i know that you have a certain tolerance of stuff that you're like okay i can actually can't see that i'm not going to go there and <laughs> the fact that you find something and the fact that jay Wu finds something that she wants to watch on a television that on itself is like the highest accolade because you don't watch tv like tv to you is like how can people waste their time watching TV? Like, I don't understand. You're not being productive. There's something else you could be doing. 
<laughs> right above. Well, there's only so many hours of home searches online I could do cross-referencing Zillow, Redfin, Anna, MLS. I mean, you don't even understand the hours online. I'm sitting on my butt. And I wish there's a more productive way that I can do this online time and not be sitting because, and I know people have invented those walking treadmills. I would love to have one of those because uh, now it is more crucial than ever before to try to unearth, you know, and make sure that I haven't, um, there's no stone I, I don't want to unturn at this point to just find a home for the people that we're searching for right now. And um, it's just hours on a, a day to kind of go through all the neighborhoods because it's not just here, it's actually throughout, you know, whether it's Beverly Hills or the Canyon or, you know, Los Feliz and, and Brentwood, et cetera. And we have such a large number of folks that we're, we're um, looking to help find. And uh, just cross-referencing myself, make sure everything, every little bit is, and I'm getting, you know, again, all these off-market emails and things like that to just read through everything. It's exhaustive. And that's why in the past, it, it really is difficult. But I've, I've found that I, I, my husband and I, because we're not going out at all at nighttime, is to um, connect on, on these shows and uh, I'm discovering, I mean, there, 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 there's some pretty talented, obviously talented shows that are uh, out there, um, but well, you, limiting you, it to just uh, things that don't give me bad images. <laughs> well, right, exactly, or anxieties or other kind of things, right? It's, a, True. it's, it's, like, a, it's like a diet, it's a diet for your mind, like what am I yes. willing to put in? And, that, and I'm at a very, that's what I was saying about some of the albums. Like, for instance, I'm a huge fan of Miles Davis, but Miles Davis had a very dark period. And it's important mm. to understand it historically and contextually as he was working out his life experiences through his music. But if you listen to it, it's so abrasive. It's so harsh that you have to really be in a mental state to want to even take it on. And so quite honestly, listen to it once, twice. Okay, I'm kind of good with that. I'm going to move it along. And I do that selectively with TV shows or, or any kind of, it's almost all Netflix anyway. So it's just, or, or Hulu or Amazon. I think those are the main vehicles that we're watching at this moment uh, and or sports, you know, for what it's worth, but selectively dieting, like what I control, what my thoughts are by what I put into my mind, what I allow into my mind as best that I can so that I have time and space to really connect with my own inner feelings about the world at large. And, and you're talking about something I think is really important to share that in our profession, you know, we've been very fortunate because of the, our business practices and our ethics and our reputation and our perseverance and endurance in this industry that we're able to be successful in this very difficult time. Uh, that's not true for most other agents that are out there. Most of the other agents are really struggling and trying to unearth things. And it's super interesting that you talked about that extra layer of research. And it's not an extra layer. It's, it's five layers. You know, it's this investigation leads to this investigation. I got to cross this off and I got to cross this off and cross this off because there's so many sources of that information. But what was also interesting about it is I was looking at our window that we have this uh, big picture window on the very front of Hyler. Uh, and I was like, okay, first of all, that's outdated. So we need to make some changes there, Kate, <clears throat> if you're listening. But if not, I'll be doing it. So I don't know if you want that to happen, but okay. Because I think it's important for people to have that uh, understanding. But a lot of the stuff I was thinking about putting up there are the off-market things that we have. We have people that are willing to sell, but really kind of are, are concerned about the environment today. And as much as you try to convince them, we can work with COVID-19. We all understand all the sanitary ways of being. We all understand that the mitigations we have to take to, to be able to even conduct. Jay, you've been in inspections and going through investigations after investigations with this recent property over here. In the, what, what's that part of town that you're selling that in? Uh, as it's a name? over in uh, Rainier Park. Rainier Park. And, 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 you're, and you've really had to dive into it very deeply. You spent a lot of time in it, researching the reports, going and investigating at the site. But each time it's a mask, it's gloves, it's sanitary, it's a, it's a form, it's a disclosure, it's distancing. Uh, I, I was saying to uh, someone uh, yesterday, I said, the business is, we're still very busy, but there's probably three or four extra steps in every part of the process we have to go through. So it's way more cumbersome to get something done than it used to be, but necessary, right? It's our responsibility. These are the things that well, we look have at to it, do. You can, yeah, as a healthcare worker, I mean, it's not like you can go in with just a mask and gloves anymore. I mean, they're in full head to toe body suits and the amount of layers of layers, sometimes two, three masks and a face shield. So I think every industry that has any human to human contact, we are, we've had to up our efforts significantly 
and safety protocol to ensure that we're keeping ourselves safe and the, the, the client safe, et cetera. And uh, it's just the, the being sanitary and obviously being clean, which we're a big fan of, um, has caught up to the rest of, of the world. And uh, now it's just an, uh, that extra layer of effort and organization and um, making sure that you know everybody follows the protocol. It's just our new normal. It's truly, it is our true, it's the true new normal, uh, you know, and actually as a social commentary again, because I like to bring it up, just the consideration of masks, because we do know people that are immunocompromised that we may interact with occasionally, uh, you know, whenever I'm on the street, and I've, been, I've taken to riding my bike most everywhere I go at this stage, which is kind of fun. It's a nice way of seeing the city and, and remembering your neighborhood and all the little stores, and, you know, kind of checking in with people. But, you know, I walk through them and I just have this, they just pop, go, pop, go. I don't understand where that's a struggle for people. I understand you may or may not want to infringe upon your right, but dear God, if I could just make that plea again, wear a mask. It, and, and, I, and this is me and the people that know me are like, oh, are you one? I'm like, yes, I'm one of those guys. I just want the world to be a safer, better place. And what little step can we take? Well, there's no scientific data. Well, actually- Oh God, is, just do it. Teamwork just, makes the dream work. Everybody just, it, it could all just, all hunker in together. Love it. Huddle love up. It. Do your part. Simple. It's simple. It's simple. It's simple, it's simple. And just do it because you care for all of humanity and not be so self-centered and self-serving. It, it just drives me crazy. But, you know, I, that's why you and I are business partners, because we think exactly the same way and we see reason and logic. If it's reasonable and logical, guess what? We're going to adapt to it and we're going to appreciate it and we incorporate it. You know, it's not totally that difficult. <laughs> no, it's really not that difficult. It's really not that difficult. Uh, and it is just general consideration. It's interesting because uh, of the several properties that we are, we're in escrow and handling. And you talked about this before I wanted to reference it as well, because I'm helping somebody this morning deal with a property in Montrose. If anybody knows where that is, it's actually got a great sandwich shop up there. Uh, and then I'm working on a project on Sunland. Then I've got a place in Beverly Hills that I'm working on, and then another place in Santa Monica. So our, we're not we're all we're having practice everywhere, and it's these same protocols. And in the one very nice, beautiful luxury condominium project, it's elevator, right? So I'm going up and down with these people, but it's so interesting the way the building is being managed and the way we are for protocol purposes because of the size of the elevator. There's like one person plus me in the elevator, and you have to have a master key to get in to all the levels that this place is at. It, it, it took me 10 minutes to get everybody up and down so they could be in the space separately and then sure. be able to walk them through. Uh, you know, uh, but that's a, level of, that's a level of care and it's a level of consideration. It's a level of thoughtfulness for others. Like just, uh, yes, gladly going this extra mile to make the world a little bit better, safer for everybody else in this environment. And as we see numbers growing, we have some concerns about more exposures and you know, it's like, okay, well, uh, odds are good at some level, you're going to know someone or several people that have had this COVID-19. Uh, and for most of us, it's going to be probably okay. But for some of us, it's, it's very life-threatening and it's very real. <clears throat> and so it, it, I, I feel very strongly to share that again. And I'm sorry for belaboring it, but it's a practice that we have in our personal lives. It's how it's a practice we have in our professional lives. And we were hoping, we are hoping that everyone else will adapt it for a period of time. It's not forever, but to your point, we lose our, our Heiler Harvest this year. I mean, we've had that tradition for a decade almost. Uh, we ha we're going to lose Pic years, yeah. Yeah, we're going to lose Pic Pico, uh, most likely uh, going forward for a little while while we figure out other things with the city and the budget. These are huge community things that we very much believe in. Uh, so again, that's why the community stuff is so important to us too, supporting the local businesses, whether you can go to a little local restaurant that's serving a breakfast or a coffee or a, a pint or whatever try to do that um i was something else i was going to ask you well i'm sorry the chain the train left the station <laughs> as it happens I, I actually wanted i actually wanted to ask the chef eric about uh hot sauces because now that i've, I've and i shared with people that i'm really into hot sauces and i got indoctrinated in this really bizarre walk of into hotter and hotter and hotter peppers and purists like it's just got to be a pepper it can't be any added Capacin or Capacin or whatever they call that. And um, so I've been doing that and I was wondering about the chef. Like, so I, I, I was having some of that last night and somebody I was talking to on the phone, they're like, why are you stopping in their conversation? I go, oh, cause I'm just trying to get, 
the, I'm loving the heat of the spice. And I'm like, I think I'm, I think I'm a spice. How is your addict. stomach lining handling this though? Well, I, I will have to say I had to learn to create a little bit of spacing. So I had okay. to learn, I couldn't go every single day that I could wait three or four days and then the body could process it in a very clear way. I can tell you this, there is not a damn bacteria living in my life unless it is as strong. It's like the Superman of bacteria if it's still in there because everything else has been just cooked alive in the pepper. Annihilated, you've annihilated oh, everything else. They're so good. <laughs> and I like, and I wait for that moment when all of a sudden I just like, and I just start to perspire and I'm like, oh, I love this so much. And my wife's looking at me like, you're a weirdo. <laughs> that's <laughs> <laughs> oh. fun that's fun uh well, now i can't believe it it's almost end of july um we definitely see the activity continuing for sure we got some new listing opportunities coming up as well which is great um hopefully we'll have this beautiful uh city view property up in mountain olympus coming on the market in about a month or so gorgeous opportunity to update and have just a just this gorgeous uh, view of all commanding of view yeah well, very you, commanding you can, view you can you know when you think about that j2 the opportunities were presented in our trusted sources and people we've networked through many many years developed these rapport you know the person that brought us that opportunity looking for the qualification but you, and you needed to know mount olympus which is interesting we had the experience we certainly knew enough about it but when you went up there and you were able to share that you shared it on your social media and if you hopefully it moved on to the Hyler site, you, you're able to see what offers people so much hope, why view properties are so significant, because it's just this expanse and you feel mm -hmm. like you're above it, but you're still a part of it. And that yeah. property, I think, I think that's a diamond waiting to be buffed out. I really think there's a huge yeah. upside on it and somebody's going to see it um, and really do something special with it because you can't replace it. You know, those views are protected when you're in the hillsides. You know, there's ordinances that keep your neighbor from building a citadel in front of you so that you will always have uh, this incredible, vast view. That, that looked like it was a solid 180 degrees and 50 miles. I mean, it was really yeah. amazing. It was That'd great. It's a great, it's a great house. And then you have a condo coming up over in Santa Monica as well. That, that, that should be a really exciting opportunity. Again, it's one of those uh, kind of diamond in the rough properties, right? You gotta fix yeah, it a little this, bit. But. This is actually an old school townhome built in the seventies. So this is in the very beginning of the development. So what's happened now, and Jay, our experience is builders, when they get their site, they do everything they can to maximize as many units as they can get on that property, right? Cause it's all about profitability and numbers, et cetera mm -hmm. for them. But back when these things were first developed uh, and condominiums first came into fashion in Los Angeles, it was more about a real viable, affordable how, uh, alternative to a single family home. And so they built them uh, pretty substantial with great space. So this has uh, four, almost 1500 square feet, which is pretty wow. rare. And, and it's as a townhome style. So it's got that nice two story, you have a public space down below, and then you have private space above. But this, this unit hasn't been touched. I mean, I think the guy changed his carpet. I think that's the only thing and maybe added a microwave at some point in time. Other than that, it's all original. And sure. so I look at it to go, Ooh, this is one of those opportunities to take a space that you won't see very often and transform it some, into something special. Cause you just can't get the square footage. So I have a feeling this will be well perceived. It is in Santa Monica, which draws a lot of people for a number of different reasons, whether it is career and, and, and proximity to the business centers of Santa Monica and the West side but as well for its school systems that people often go into for um, into Santa Monica. So yeah, I'm excited about and the that beach. It, well, Proximity and, to the beach. You can't beat actually, that. No, actually, sorry. I did not give proper kudos to the queen of us all, which is the beach, which is why we're all here in Southern California. Anyway, the weather, the view, the ocean, the sand, my gosh, I need to get down to the beach. I think I'll probably do that later this afternoon. It's gonna be chilly, I think, this weekend, but it's gonna warm up soon enough. I think the most beautiful time to be in the water for someone who doesn't like frigid, frigid cold water is uh, right around September, October is some of the most gorgeous uh, temperatures in the ocean for me. Um, so that's, that's always. Well, you know, I, I, I love cold. So the cold water, I, I should say, immersing myself in, but I love the water period. And it just getting in it, and the fact that we do live where we live and we have access to something like that. I'm, you know, when people talk about California and real estate, I just always just kind of go, until you replace that. 10 minutes. 
I know it's 10 minutes to get to the beach, so you can't really beat it. And <laughs> I've actually run the 16 miles a round trip from LA along the coast all the way up and back uh, to make it a, you know, a little over a loop. It was supposed to have been, it supposed to have been a half marathon route, but my friend uh, mapped it and it actually ended up being 16 miles. So wow. that was, that was a, that was a really long run day. We did a couple of years ago, but probably felt that probably felt that later on. Oh yeah, it did for sure. I don't, I don't think I've ever run that long ever again since, but it's, it's, it's so beautiful to do so out here with this weather and the, the geography that we, we have to work with. So you really can't beat it, but uh, it's top of the hour again. And the time goes so fast. I miss <sighs> you buddy so much. Miss you too. Um, miss you too. Thank you. And uh, I just uh, another, hopefully a couple months of just, just being really, really safe. My, my well, biggest if, if every, if, school. if everybody, if everybody does that, right. If everybody just agrees, Hey, can we do eight weeks? Can everybody just, let's grab eight weeks. I know it's another couple months. Just do it. If we can do that, can we at least try to really feel this thing? Because, yeah. you know, it's moving to the place where it's a consternation again, a great consternation. Yeah. And uh, I'm with you. And, and hopefully the school thing will get worked out. I think we all share that. I'll share that for the yeah. kids, for their socialization, for their experiences in school. Uh, we don't really want to be online if we don't have to be. And so we'll, we'll hope for some good changes. We'll see. We shall see. Um, well, be safe, buddy. Miss you. Right, love girl. you. Love you All too. Right. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.